Hi there, welcome to Architect Interview Question Series by Knowledge Powerhouse. In this series, we are covering a lot of system design questions, and these are the popular questions that can be asked, and they will, that will help you understand the concept of system design and software architecture. Let's go on to our next question. Question is, what are the popular residency design patterns? So residency is the topic we covered in one of the previous videos. And now we are trying to look into what are the different solutions that can be provided based on the popular design patterns in system. So resiliency is the ability of a system to gracefully handle failure and recover from these failures. So failures have to be up, like, you know, they are inevitable. So in a dis distributed system, there is a high probability that some kind of failure will happen. So whether there is a failure at a component like your service goes down or network breakdown is there or some node goes down so which is like infrastructure level failure so how would we prepare our system to handle these kind of failures is the resiliency of your system so some of the popular design patterns in resiliency are bulkhead design pattern circuit breaker compensating transaction health endpoint monitoring leader election and Q-based load level. And there's another one on retry. So we'll cover these uh, seven uh, design patterns one by one in detail. So let's go through the bulkhead. So this bulkhead design pattern, if you see the diagram, it comes from uh, like shipping the world where the whole ship is divided into separate compartments. And these compartments are like called bulkheads. And what happens is that if there is a kind of a hole in the ship or some damage, then it ha generally happens on one part of the ship, not in the whole ship. So when it happens in the one part of the ship and water starts coming inside, then the solution is that because of these compartments, only that compartment is isolated through some doors and all, through doors and hatches. And once that compartment is closed, uh, the problem is limited only to that compartment. So which means like if there are 10 compartments and one is like you know having a problem then that compartment is broken and while other nine compartments keep working efficiently that way you minimize it so in this pattern we isolate the component of an application into multiple pools so that if one component fails the failure is limited to that pool only the other pool and components will continue to function properly like I mean, if you see Amazon website, uh, there you have uh, various components, like some component shows uh, what are the products you like, one component shows what are the products you search for, then one another component shows like uh, what you might be interested into. So in such a scenario, all these components are independent. And let's say if uh, there is a failure in the components you like, still rest of the web page still keeps working. So you won't see the whole page having errors. So that's how they create a bulkhead that many services, they keep working and keep showing something to the customer so the customer is able to proceed. Another design pattern is circuit breaker. Again, this circuit breaker is very common in our houses where in electricity lines, we have circuit breakers. So that if there is a kind of a failure or a fuse, the circuit breaker comes and the power line is disconnected. So what happens is that because of this disconnection, the failure is limited to uh, only like, it doesn't cause a bigger issue in the house, right? So in this pattern, we handle uh, failures that might take a variable amount of time to fix when connecting to a remote service or resource. So we practice to like implement it, uh, even in the case of uh, denial of service attack. So if somebody is hammering our service with a lot of requests just to, create denial of service kind of a situation, then we just can make use of circuit breaker and uh, stop the answering the request from that specific user or like you know from specific IP. That way circuit breaker implementation helps a lot. So many scenarios are there where we have to implement circuit breaker. Also, if there is some failure happening in one service and we want to recover, in such a scenario, we uh, invoke our circuit breaker so isolate that service, let other services keep working, 
and because circuit breaker the other services do not get impacted they know that oh, the service is down they can continue working without it so this improves the overall resiliency of the system another uh, good design pattern is compensating transaction this is generally used in eventually consistent kind of application here we created compensating transactions for an erroneous transaction for example you are creating a financial system and some issue happened because of which you weren't able to like run some specific kind of credit to a customer let's i'm just giving an example now how do you compensate it so either one way is that you go back in history update it but now in case of event buses or like Kafka kind of situation downstream applications might have already received that transaction or not received it so how do you solve it so what we do is that we do not update any data rather we create another compensating transaction like i mean if you have given like positive 10 to somebody then you have create compensating transaction of negative 10 and that negative 10 flows all the way to the downstream application that way the whole system becomes eventually consistent so the purpose of compensating transaction is to undo the work performed by previous steps that were created in error so this is a good way of handling error and it is pretty fast because if you start implementing update then you have to take care of a lot of consistency in many systems whereas if you are just sending another uh, transaction of uh, like negative amount it just needs to flow through so remember uh, addition or like you know insertion is much faster then update in any system so that is the idea behind compensating transaction especially like in this big data world compensating transactions are very popular all right so in resiliency another good point is health endpoint monitoring it's like a health check kind of a thing so it's a helper design pattern so with the help of this we can do health monitoring uh, of our services and provide it to external tools like i mean if you have a load balancer then load balancer is dependent on health checks similarly like if you have uh, some kind of implementation uh, where you want to create alerts and mechanisms to know the health of your service then you implement this kind of health checks so by running these health checks the other services can learn whether your service is functional or not if the health check fails then the calling service can take an alternate course of action so i mean like in our previous example when we were in circuit breaker similarly like here in health check if um, there is a main service which is trying to prepare a whole web page to show to the customer and if it calls a downstream services if some of the downstream services health check is coming as false in such a scenario the calling service the main service will take action that oh let's uh, ignore the service and take care with the rest of the data and create the page so that way the services are prepared to take alternate course of action so overall resiliency increases in earlier world when this thing is not implemented then due to just one failure in one service the whole system will go down whereas with health check monitoring you can still continue to work So leader election, this is another design pattern. And here we implement some kind of algorithm or protocol so that we can elect any node to become the leader and manage other nodes in a distributed system. So like if we have Cassandra-like system where we have like any node can become leader. So here we need to implement this kind of a protocol that in case of a failure, how rest of the nodes will elect a new leader. So with this pattern, if one node like leader node goes down, still the system can continue because other nodes know how to create another leader out of that so that's a very good pattern that we follow another design pattern on resiliency is cube-based load leveling it's very simple to understand let's say we have a lot of traffic coming now to handle this traffic so what we do is we can implement a queue mechanism and queue is nothing but like a buffer in which we keep accepting a lot of requests that are coming as a heavy load and then downstream services can start uh, processing these requests in the order of queue so the in the order they came in the same order we start uh, processing these so because of this buffer these downstream systems they do not get bombarded by a lot of traffic because 
this uh, heavy traffic stays in a queue and that is a buffer we maintain. So it helps in creating a smooth level of load for the service and it also provides time for scaling up or scaling down the service based on the load in queue. Which means if uh, the load increases in the queue, then we can see, oh, the load has increased in the queue, let's scale up and uh, create more nodes and more instances of the service. So that way your resiliency as well as performance of the, of the whole overall system improves. The last uh, design pattern in this series is retry. Retry is again very simple to understand. Here we can just implement a retry mechanism that how many times you want to retry, what is the interval after which retry should happen. So retry is invoked whenever there is some kind of failure. So if we are expecting some failure can happen while calling a downstream service, then we can implement a retry. So it retry can be like a smaller number of times. And it's common to have these many failures in a distributed system. So some failure will happen in some nodes, some service will go down, some deployment take place. So when we build a retry op operation, then we are prepared to handle these common failures without disrupting the overall system. So that way retry is a very simple mechanism that can improve the overall resiliency of your system. All right, uh, if you have any questions or any comments or suggestions and ideas, do post in the comments of this video. It will be very helpful. Uh, and if you uh, have any kind of uh, like queries or new findings, let us know. We'll be happy to answer that. All right, thanks uh, everyone. And do subscribe to this channel so that you can get latest updates on the system design and architect level questions.